This video will demonstrate the use of the Networker Management Console 8.0 SQL Client Configuration Wizard. For this demo, I'm simply going to be focusing on SQL 2012 integration with the data domain. So within the Networker Management Console, I'm going to be looking at two different areas. The first is going to be Enterprise, and after I've run a backup, I will walk you through the reports. When we look at Enterprise, you're going to see there's three resources configured. I have Abamar, Data Domain, which we will be focusing on, and then the Networker Server itself. I can double click on the Networker Server, and the Networker Administration Console is automatically launched. I'm going to be creating a new SQL client or a new SQL backup and pointing it to a data domain device. We have already configured the data domain device and we did this through the Networker Administration Console and we leveraged the data domain wizard to create the device. You're going to see that the data domain has already been used for previous backups. I will now step through creating a SQL client that will back up to the data domain device. So I simply click on the configuration tab and you're going to see within my groups that I already have a SQL group configured. So I will use the new client configuration wizard to create a new client. I'm going to type in the client name, choose traditional networker client. The Networker module for Microsoft Applications has auto-discovered my environment and found that I have file systems and a SQL server loaded on that server. I'm going to choose a SQL server, and in the next screen, I can choose my deduplication methodology. So as noted before, we have Abamar and Data Domain in this environment. We're going to focus on Data Domain, so I will select Data Domain. I will select the backup pool that Networker will be using. I want to leverage ddboost, so I am going to allow the client direct to be selected. I can now be granular about what I want to back up in this SQL environment. For this demo, I am going to choose to back up everything. The next step is to enter the credentials for the SQL server. You have a variety of options that you can choose for the backup of this client. For example, you can choose whether or not you want to use compression or encryption. You can truncate logs, specify the number of stripes for the backups, etc. I'm going to leave the defaults for this demo. We now have the chance to define our browse policy, our retention policies, the backup schedule that we want to associate to this client, and we can also give the client a name or a comment. So I call this one SQL2. We have the option of using an existing group for the backup, or we can create a new group. Because I'm using the wizard, I'm going to create a new group called SQL2, and you'll see that the wizard will automatically create the group at the end of the configuration. During the backup, we can choose to back up to the server or to a storage node. In this environment, I only have a single server, so I will leave the default of the networker server only. You can now review the information on the client and create the client. The client has now been successfully created, and you're going to see when we look at the groups that the SQL2 group has been created and my client has been configured within that group. So you just saw how easy it was to create a SQL backup through the configuration wizard. So now let's go look at the client that we just configured and make sure that all of the properties are properly defined. So what we're going to see is the name of the client was automatically populated along with the group the browse and retention policies. If we look at the apps and modules tab, you're going to see that the credentials were automatically populated along with the backup command that will be run to back up this database. You can also see that we have chosen the data domain as our backup target.